It is these images of Narendra Modi, India's Prime Minister, that have come to define India's foreign policy. A strong leader, comfortable and confident in the presence of the most powerful leaders in the world. Representative of a strong India. A nation growing economically. The world's most populous nation. A nation being pursued by the West. As a geopolitical heavyweight in Asia, which counters an expansionist China. India has come centre stage because of uh, our ability, uh, particularly the Prime Minister's ability to work in partnership with uh, different leaders and work in partnership with different countries. Narendra Modi started with a master stroke. He was the first Prime Minister of India to think of inviting the immediate neighbours of South Asia and Mauritius, our near neighbour, to his inauguration. No other country uh, so far uh, in a kinetic situation stood up to China the way, the way we have. In the eyes of many leaders from around the world, India and Modi can do no wrong. He is the most popular world leader for a reason. He is unbelievable visionary and the, his level of commitment to the people of India is uh, just indescribable and deep and passionate and real and authentic. From day one in 2014, foreign policy and making India's mark abroad has been a key priority for the Prime Minister. <laughs> in August 2014, during his first visit outside India's neighborhood, Mr. Modi struck up a warm rapport with his Japanese counterpart Shinzo Abe. <laughs> a personal relationship that ended tragically. When Abe was assassinated in July last year. आज भारत की जनता अभिशान को बहुत याद करती है, जापान को बहुत याद करती है, भारत एक प्रकार से अभिशान को मिस कर रही है। Prime Minister Modi was in Japan for the last rites. Shinzo Abe, unke param mitra. Today, the militaries of India and Japan train together, with Japan being a key member of the Malabar naval exercises, along with the US and Australia. The common threat is well understood. China. And its growing naval threat in waters that India has been unchallenged in, in the past. Our relationship with Japan, it was always important. <clears throat> Ever since we did the Look East uh, approach, uh, it was important. But he, with Mr. Abe, he had a very special relationship. Similarly, the breakthrough with the Saudis and the UAE, I think that improved our position in the Middle East. Uh, the relationship with Israel, which had started even earlier, again has flowered. You are a revolutionary leader, in the best sense of the word revolution. Until you visited Israel, no leader of India in 3,000 years of our own sovereign existence and our history has visited Israel. You are the first leader of a state, of an India state, to do this. Narendra Modi is more well-traveled than any Indian prime minister before him. 
As of April this year, Mr. Modi had made 67 foreign trips, visiting 63 countries. May no one suffer. Home, peace, peace, peace. May the force be with you. Su Excelencia, Narendra Modi. Including visits to the United Nations General Assembly in New York. हम उस देश के वासी हैं जिसने दुनिया को युद्ध नहीं बुद्ध दिए हैं शांति का संदेश दिया है. India's foreign policy has been really vibrant. It's been very dynamic. Uh, to my mind, uh, uh, India has come center stage because of uh, our ability, uh, particularly the Prime Minister's ability to work in partnership with uh, different leaders and work in partnership with different countries. So we've never been a part of any bloc. We work, everybody is our partner. And uh, I think that has really been the key to a very vibrant, lively and uh, a very forward-looking foreign policy of India. His key foreign policy team from 2014, the late Foreign Minister Sushma Swaraj, General V.K. Singh, the former Army Chief. Ajit Doval, the National Security Advisor. And perhaps more than anyone else, Dr. S. J. Shankar, India's former Foreign Secretary and now Foreign Minister, the man who's driven India's foreign policy agenda. Somewhere Europe has to grow out of the mindset that Europe's problems are the world's problems. But the world's problems are not Europe's problems. It's the relationship with the United States, though, which has seen, perhaps, the biggest transformation. After decades of eyeing each other with concern, India and America are now the closest strategic partners, having closed out key foundational agreements that took years for both sides to agree on. America no longer sees India through the prism of New Delhi's historic closeness with Moscow. And India no longer sees the US through the prism of their relationship with Islamabad. The four foundational agreements which have been signed mean that India and the US are closer militarily and strategically than America is with any nation other than its closest NATO allies. Like in the case of Japan, the basis of the growing closeness is defined in one word, China. With the US having decisively shifted its gaze to the Pacific, India is a natural partner, the world's largest democracy and the world's oldest democracy in a partnership. Narendra Modi has driven this alliance. Today, the United States is our largest economic partner. Uh, the last figure that I saw was $162 billion of trade in goods and services. I think it has grown since then. Uh, there are about $20, $22 billion worth of arms purchases we made from the United States. We have signed all the foundational agreements, uh, some of them during Prime Minister Modi's time, uh, to set the foundation uh, for increasingly close uh, ties. Uh, in terms of uh, the range of dialogues we have on all issues today facing the international community, uh, we have the most intensive dialogue with the United States. I would say, yes, Prime Minister Modi uh, has uh, given a really new dimension uh, to our ties by broadening them in, in so many areas which 
were not there on the agenda before. एक ऐतिहासिक घटना आज मोटेरा के इस विशाल स्टेडियम में जिसके साक्षी हम बने हैं मैत्री का यह संदेश आज विश्व भर को प्राप्त हुआ है प्रेसिडेंट डोनाल्ड ट्रंप शेकिंग हैंड्स अ वॉर्म हग सिंबलाइजिंग द ग्रेट इंडो अमेरिकन फ्रेंडशिप The aim is to strengthen and deepen the ties further. In Ahmedabad at the Namaste Trump event, Donald Trump was given a sense of what friendship with India could mean. India USA friendship. USA friendship. India US friendship. Namaste Trump. Namaste. The life of Prime Minister Modi underscores the limitless promise of this great nation. He started out by his father's side as a chiwala, a tea seller. When he was a young man, he worked at a cafeteria in this city. Stand. Everybody loves him but I will tell you this he's very tough <laughs>
on the edge. It wasn't at all like this when Modi took over as Prime Minister in 2014. These images of Modi and China Xi Jinping sitting together on a swing by the banks of the Sabarmati in Ahmedabad gave way to what New Delhi has come to see as Beijing's great betrayal. It began in Doklam, a high-altitude plateau in Bhutan in 2017, when Indian soldiers physically entered Bhutanese territory to stop the illegal construction of Chinese roads. China backed down then, turning its attention instead to the entire frontier between the two nations. Prime Minister Modi would not have known of this when he visited Wuhan in China in 2018 for an informal summit with Xi. The two leaders had six rounds of talks that stretched close to 10 hours. Chinese behavior which we simply are unable to fathom. You know, what happened in 2020? Why did it happen? Uh, what were the Chinese motives? Even today, it's very difficult to, uh, to tell. Um, I, I've written a book on this and by, eventually I don't have any answer as to what the Chinese are up to. But clearly the Chinese challenge, and we also have to understand that, don't forget that till uh, the end of 2019, Modi was going great guns with the Chinese. We've had, we'd had two informal summits, one in Wuhan, one in Chennai. You know, and informal summits were billed as uh, a new phase of Sino-Indian relationship. And then suddenly in 2020, uh, they sweep the rug under our feet. Some say the seeds of the Ladakh crisis had been sown in Doklam. June 16, 2020, Galwan, Ladakh. The most serious clashes between Indian and Chinese soldiers since the 62 war. A massive Chinese incursion along the frontier, which had, by and large, seen peace for decades. It was an incursion that brought India and China to the edge of war. Two nuclear armed nations ending up deploying more than 50,000 soldiers along a frontier at heights above 12,000 feet. Confronted by a massive Chinese military buildup across the line of actual control, India's response has been clear. We build up infrastructure on our side of the LAC to match what China is doing across the LAC. Narendra Modi has been far more direct in his remarks on the other principal Indian adversary, Pakistan. Pakistan must walk away from terror if it wants to work towards dialogue with India. The message was overt and it was clear. If you hit us, we will hit you back harder with much more force. September 29, 2016, India's surgical strike. The Indian Army conducted surgical strikes last night at these launch pads. 
we can certainly not allow the terrorists to operate across the line of control with impunity and attack the citizens of our country. And India struck again after the Pulwama terror strike in which 40 CRPF Jawans were killed in a car bomb attack in Kashmir. Pakistan has used terror as an instrument of state power against a neighbor. It is the probably the most ruthless set of actions any country has seen. What this government has done is to convey a very clear message that it will not stand for any act of terrorism and that there will be retribution delivered rapidly and proportionately. And this is what has happened. Now, I think this is the only way for a state to function. You cannot take slaps in the face and then say, theek hai, galti ho gai, chalo, maaf kar diya. February 14, 2019, Palakot. Determined to send out a strong message to Pakistan that terror would be met by force, the Indian Air Force conducted its first raids deep into Pakistani airspace in decades. Targeting a Jesh e Mohammed terror camp on a hilltop. Operation was carried out to tell Jesh e Mohammed that no matter where you are, wherever you are, like in this case they were in Pakistan, we'll come and get you. Right. If you if you if you carry out terrorist attacks in our country, I think that message went down loud and clear. But it also triggered a response from Pakistan. A massive attempted counterattack the following morning, which resulted in the first air battles between the Indian and Pakistani Air Force since the 1971 war. A new hero was born for India that day, Wing Commander Abhinandan Vartman, the Indian Air Force pilot who attempted an intercept of Pakistani F-16s moments before he was shot down and held prisoner of war. In the end, Abhinandan walked across the border, a hero in the eyes of the nation. <laughs> It's this same idea of a strong India, led by a strong leader, that resonates with people of Indian origin around the world, the diaspora. There has been no Indian leader who's made such a strong connect with Indians abroad. Wow. They have been a core constituency for Narendra Modi, representatives of India on foreign soil. In interactions with Indians overseas, the Prime Minister has been extraordinarily candid. Rail ki patriwala Modi ye Narendra Modi hai. Royal Palace, Savaso Karod Hindustanio ka ek sevak hai. Wo Narendra Modi nahi hai. The genius is in using not only the non-resident Indians, but the diaspora. And the diaspora are people of the first, second, third, and subsequent generations. It was Israel that crafted the method, for its own reasons, for its survival, the method of diaspora management. And I think India is probably the second major country to have learned the skill of reaching out to the diaspora. 
it's an investment of effort. To be truthful, previous prime ministers have also done this. But Narendra Modi has taken it maybe two steps further forward. The personal touch and expression have not been lost upon world leaders. The Prime Minister has come to be seen as a representative of a friendly India, a nation willing to partner even at the toughest of times. India has shown the world that even in a, in a time of greatest need, and crisis, they can be a reliable partner. At the height of COVID, India was among the first nations of the world to export vaccines. diplomatic reach has extended to support of distressed Indian nationals around the world. Rescues of students from Ukraine, Indian nationals in Yemen and now Sudan, of people in desperate situations have come by tapping into some of the close relationships that Prime Minister Modi has personally built. Today, India, now established as a major international player, has a key role to play in perhaps the biggest international diplomatic challenge. As president of the group of 20 nations, the G20, Prime Minister Modi will attempt to bring together Western nations and Russia and China to arrive at a consensus on the way forward in ending the war in Ukraine. Stability along the frontiers and tackling our biggest geostrategic threat, China, is key to India's dreams of transforming the lives of 1.4 billion citizens. It'll be a huge challenge, one that'll require deft Indian diplomacy and the Prime Minister's personal touch.